Hello, welcome back to the second session of Decision Theory, Business Economics. I am Sarita Avi, Assistant Professor, Department of Basic Science and Humanities, Rajagiri School of Engineering and Technology. In the previous session, we actually discussed about what a decision is, what are the components of decision making, what are the steps in decision making, what are the causes of poor decision, and we also discussed about the payoff table. In this session, we will discuss in detail the types of decision making. The types of decision making is actually based on different environments. So this decision making can be under certainty, uncertainty and risky environment. In a certainty condition, the decision maker is sure about the probable outcome of his decision. In an uncertainty atmosphere, the decision maker cannot actually calculate what will be the return of his, outcome, what will be the return of his decision or investment. In the third, that is risky atmosphere, the decision maker is, that means the probable outcome is actually known to the decision maker. So these three are the different environments in which we can actually make decision. So we have certainty, uncertainty and risky situations. So let's take the case of a certainty atmosphere. So we are discussing this with the help of a payoff table. I hope you remember what a payoff is. Payoff is a quantitative outcome of your decision making. And in a payoff table, you can actually read the alternatives. That is in our example, a decision problem was to invest. So here we have the alternatives, shares, real estate and starters. You can invest in any of these. The state of nature, which is unknown actually, that is boom, stable, recession, atmosphere. In this condition, the particular investor or the decision maker is sure about the probable outcome. For example, if I am an investor, that means if I am certain about my outcomes of this investment, I clearly know that if I invest in real estate, under the recession atmosphere, I can lose that investment or I will, lose, I will lose that investment. Now, if I'm investing in shares under a boom condition, I can actually gain profit. So this is the way how we will read a payoff table. So in a certainty condition, all these payoff will be known to the investor. So for example, if he is investing in boom time period, he is sure that he will get 50 now, under stable atmosphere, it is better to invest in real estate. Under recession atmosphere, if he is investing in startup, he is clear about the fact that he will lose the amount of money. So, this is the way how we will read that payoff table. And this is the condition under certainty. The investor is clear about the outcome of his decision making. Now, let's consider the case of uncertainty atmosphere. Remember, in an uncertainty atmosphere, the decision maker is not clear about the problem outcome. That means he is not able to figure out, figure out what will be the result of his decision making. So we have different criteria, that is maxi-max criteria, mini-max, maxi-min and Laplace criteria. This is based on the attitude of this investor under different conditions. Now, before discussing what are all, what all are these criteria, we will first try to understand that means how can we select the maximum and minimum payoff from the payoff table using these criteria. So that is a particular task that you have to first understand. So let's for example, I am not going into detail what is maximum criteria, but first let's try to understand how can we select this maximum and minimum payoff from this payoff matrix. So take the case of maximum criteria. So we have two parts that is maximum and minimum part. So if you get a payoff table and you are asked to find out using a maximum criteria the best payoff, first you have to answer the second part. That means from the payoff table, you have to list out the minimum payoffs first. Secondly, from the minimum payoff, you have to again select the maximum value. So that particular selected maximum value will be your best payoff. I hope it is clear. Now, given a payoff table, so we have state of nature and alternatives. Alternatives are A1, A2 and A3. State of nature S1, S2 and S3. So our first task is from among these quantitative outcomes of payoff, you have to select the minimum. Remember we are talking about maximum min criteria. So first we will identify the minimum payoff. For example, now how you will read that particular payoff or payoff matrix? First you will select an alternator and you will compare it along the state of nature. While comparing it along the state of nature, you have to first plot the minimum value. For example, I am selecting this particular value that is A1 under S2 situation is selected as the minimum value. And this minimum value will be actually listed again. That is, this is the minimum value which I am actually identifying from this particular alternative under different situation. Same way you will do 
into 4, e2 alternative and e3 alternative. You will compare it along the state of nature and you will list down the minimum payoff. From the minimum payoff, you have to select the maximum value. So this is the way how you will actually calculate the best payoff under different criterions. So now let's pick up by one by one. That is, we will first discuss maxi max criterion. Maximax criterion is related to a very optimistic investor. That means a person under Maximax criterion will always expect the best payoff. That means whatever decision he make, the best will be actually accrued to him. That means just like optimistic persons, he will always choose the best possible payoff. So given the payoff metrics, I hope you remember the way how we will actually calculate the, uh, these uh, payoffs. For example, if I am calculating share, I clearly know that 50 will be my maximum payoff. So, I am selecting shares, I am comparing it along the alternatives and I am selecting 50 because that is the maximum payoff. Remember, it is maximum of the maximum. So, you have to first answer the second part and then you will answer the first part. So, we have 50. If I am taking real estate, I am getting 80 here. If I am taking startups, I am comparing it along the alternatives, I will get it as 60. So I have listed out there as 50, 80 and 60 are the maximum possible outcome that I can map, map, map it out. And from these outcome, I am selecting 80 which is again the maximum that I can expect. So my decision is to invest in real estate. So this will be our answer to that particular question of maximax criteria. That is the decision is to invest in real estate because real estate is giving the maximum payoff under a particular state of nature. Now next we will discuss maximum criteria or maximizing the minimum payoff. That means this is with respect to a pessimistic criteria. Under a pessimistic criteria, the investor will always expect the worst payoff. That means wherever I invest, I will always get the minimum payoff or the worst payoff. So here our first task is to identify what are the worst payoff in the payoff matrix. So we have the payoff metrics, we have alternatives, we have state of nature, I'm taking shares and I am comparing it along the alternatives that is boom, stable and recession. So from among that, I am selecting 50 as the worst payoff because comparing with 50, 40 and 15, 15 is the minimum. Again, I am taking the real estate and I am seeing that minus 20, negative 20 is the worst payoff. And in the case of startup, it is minus 15 is the worst payoff. So I have listed down 15, minus 20 and minus 15 as a worst payoff that a pessimist, pessimistic person can actually expect. From among these payoff or minimum payoff, remember the first part is maximum. The minimum values we have already listed down. From among these we have to select the maximum that is 15 and my decision will be to invest in shares. So this is all about maximum criteria. The decision will be to, will be to invest in shares. Next is about mini max regret or opportunity loss table. Now, in this particular aspect, we cannot actually directly calculate the best payoff using the given metrics. From the given metrics, we have to calculate the opportunity loss table. After calculating the opportunity loss table or constructing the opportunity loss table only, you can actually select the best payoff using this particular criterion. So, we have a slightly different step in constructing the opportunity loss table. So, the first step is create an opportunity loss table or regret table. Now, what is opportunity loss? We have already explained this in the previous example. We are finding the difference between the best payoff and the actual payoff receipt. So, after finding we have to find the maximum numbers from the written table. So this is our first task that is we will first construct the opportunity loss table. So regret means it is opportunity loss. Opportunity loss means it is the best payoff minus actual payoff received. So here we have our payoff table. We have the alternatives and state of nature. So in this particular aspect we will just slightly change, our, change the way we used to calculate earlier. Okay. I am selecting the state of nature first, I will compare it along the alternatives and then I will select one best payoff or the maximum payoff. Remember, we are not calculating here many max regret here but we are actually constructing the opportunity loss table. So for constructing opportunity loss table, I am selecting 
a particular state of nature and I am comparing it along the alternators and I will select the maximum. Once I have selected the maximum, I will try to find out the difference between the other payoff received. So this is the way how we will construct the opportunity loss table. So here I am getting 80 as the maximum. I have taken both time period. I am comparing it along the alternators and I have 80 as the maximum payoff. So I will find the difference that is 80 minus 50, 80 minus 80 and 80 minus 60. Okay. So for this particular session that is for this particular part that is 80 minus 80 will give you 0 payoff. Now remember in opportunity loss table 0 means it is profit. Any number actually indicates loss. 0 means there is no loss for, se by, for selecting the real estate under boom time period. I hope that is clear. So I am selecting boom time period. I am comparing it along the alternators. Remember, remember in earlier session we used to select an alternator and compare it along the state of nature but only by constructing opportunity loss table you will select the state of nature first and compare it along the alternators. So here I have 80. Again I am selecting another state of nature and comparing it along the alternators I am finding that it is 40. This 40 also you can select. In the recession time period it is 50. So this is the way how you will construct an opportunity loss table. Now let us come to our example. So we have the alternative sun state of nature. I am taking boom time period. I am comparing it along the alternators and I am finding that 80 is the maximum. In the case of stable time period, state of nature, it is either any 40 you can take. You can actually select shares or startup also. When I am taking recession time period, the maximum amount is 50. So after identifying the maximum values, I will try to construct the opportunity loss table. So I hope you remember how we are constructing it. Take the case of this uh, bar that is table. 40 is the maximum. So 40 minus 40, 40 minus 30 and 40 minus 40. So here are the results of the opportunity loss table. We have for shares 30, 0, 0. Real estate 0, 10 and 35. For startups 20, 0 and 30. Now remember these numbers indicates loss and the 0 indicates there is no loss situation. Now, from this particular loss table, we will try to identify what is the best payoff. For example, again we are going back to the old method. I will select the alternator and compare it along the state of nature. From among the state of nature, remember it is mini max. So first we will calculate the maximum values. So here we have 30, here we have 35 and here for startups we have 30. These are the maximum values which we have listed down. From among these values, you will find the minimum, which is the minimum. Any 30 you can take, you can take shares or you can take startup also. So here I have selected shares. So the decision is to invest in shares or startups. The next one is Laplace criterion. Laplace criterion is about associate equal probability to each payoff. That means when the decision maker is not, that means the probable outcome is not known to the decision maker, he will actually provide equal probabilities to all the outcomes. So we assign equal probability to each of these events. Here we have three events, so it is 1 by 3. Now let's see how we can calculate using Laplace criteria. So here we have the payoff table, we have the alternatives and state of nature. For shares we have the given outcomes of payoff. So what we will do is, we will just average all these values. That means we are comparing it along the state of nature and we will average those values. So 50 plus 40 plus 50 divided by 3, we have 35. Same way we will list out for real estate and startups. So we have the values 35, 30 and 28.3. And we will select the maximum from these. In Laplace criterion, after finding out the average of all these outcomes, we have to select th th that particular outcome where it actually gives you maximum payoff. So we have 35 as the best possible outcome and the decision is to invest in shares. Thank you.